we've been talking to multiple guests. We've had different topics on the Splash Live in the past couple of weeks or so, talking about March being reading month. But what better way to talk about March being reading month than to talk to a school principal, more specifically, West Bloomfield School District principal of Chico Elementary, Blaine McDowell. How are you, Blaine? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Principal McDowell. We appreciate you. Talking about March being Reading Month, first and foremost, let's just get straight into it. What type of initiatives, programs, activities have you all started at the elementary school? So I'm so glad you asked that question. It's our focus for always. Reading is so important. It's going to help students in everything that they do, every job that they have. So we have a focus on reading all the time, but specifically for March, we actually kicked it off on February 29th with being a watch site for our featured author, Don Tate. So we partnered with Oakland Schools who brought him to um, a live Zoom for students and Chico was a watch site. So we invited students to either tune in at home or join us at Chico and Miss James, our Assistant superintendent, and assistant superintendent for diversity, equity, and inclusion brought us pizza and hung out with us. And Don mm. Tate has written over 90 books. So the students actually got to learn how to draw with him and they all got a copy of his new book. So that was a great way to kick things off. Other things that we're doing um, include that we have a March's reading month calendar. So all of the students have this access to this in class or um, online and there's a activity to do every single day for reading. So, you know, on pie day, they were encouraged to read and eat a piece of pie or we're having a spirit day next Friday, the Friday before spring break, and they're going to wear their pajamas and get cozy with reading and we're going to have an all school read in. So lots of things going on all the time at Chico. I love that. See, and I love that you highlighted the importance that we like to share uh, the love for reading all the time, year round, Absolutely. school year. It's not just March. And I love that. But with March being reading month, you add some extra activities, a featured author of the day or, or whatever the case may be. And that is a beautiful thing because like I, I think we discussed this earlier in the week, the art of reading and writing a book, a physical copy book is starting to kind of dwindle, dwindle away. So it's good that we kind of go back and talk to authors and, and get their experience and, you know, kind of drive that love again for reading and writing. And with that being said, from your personal experience, how do you feel or what strategy you feel like is the easiest or most effective to garner a love for reading, especially starting at a young age? Absolutely. Well, it really starts with parents at home. When kids are little, those are the most formative years for parents to be reading to their kids, you know, yes. and um, 20 minutes a day will put students' test scores to the top, will put their love of reading to the top. So really what our ask is that 20 minutes a day, um, always, and kids are never too old to be read to out loud. So even though we're a three through five building, we really encourage our families to read out loud together, to talk about the book, to talk about the characters, how the character changes, what's the lesson learned, the theme of the story. So really trying to also give parents the tools to do that. So last night we hosted um, our Title I parent meeting to give not only, of course, Mrs. McDowell's famous brownies, but all the kids got books and a coupon for our upcoming book fair in May. Um, we also have our Pine Tree reading program. Big shout out to the West Bloomfield Public Library. Um, they give us lots of books for that program and it's highlighted books. Uh, Mrs. Van Ostrand, our eye center teacher is amazing and she puts together different projects, activities, book talks for the kids so that they can pick books that are at their just right level and also books that they're interested in. So um, lots of great ways to keep kids reading. Okay, okay, joining us right now, we have a uh, West Bloomfield School District, Chico Elementary Principal McDowell joining us, talking about March being reading month, things that they're doing over there at Chico Elementary. Curiosity just sparked my 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 this question, uh, Principal McDowell. I just want to know, is technology being incorporated by an 
a chance. Reading on iPads, computers, or maybe the effects of reading or looking at a screen too long. Has that been discussed at all? Is that any anywhere in the uh, wheelhouse? You know, I think balance is best. So yes, we do read real books, of course, all the time. But, mm -hmm. you know, we know students are very interested in that technology piece. So another um, component of March's Reading Month that we did as a district um, was it's called One District, One Book. And it's where the whole district reads one book. And so that mm. was provided to teachers digitally. Some teachers had the physical copy, but that way on March 14th, everybody read all are welcome across the entire district. Students also have access to um, eBooks and um, we have a subscription to Tumble Books for students. So, you know, we wanna get them reading in any way that they can. Good, good, and that's good to hear. Um, doing any and everything you can to try to spark the different interests of the students and, and kind of keep them all in, interested in this. But one thing that's been a very hot topic nationally, subjects of books, topics of books, book covers and, and everything. Um, we've been seeing banning of books and things of that nature. So I think that pretty much kind of goes into uh, the preference of the uh, the child, the di diverse background that they may come from. How do you make sure that you are, you know, kind of tailoring to the diverse needs of your students when it comes to reading, incorporating these different books? Absolutely. Well, Chico is a very diverse school. So that is something that's super important to us. Mm -hmm. We want students to be able to see themselves in literature. And so we work closely uh, with Ms. James, our diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator for the district. And it's a big part of our professional development as well for teachers to really be analyzing their classroom libraries to make sure that students see themselves in literature. So we are very intentional about the books that we order for classrooms, the books that teachers order through um, the different book clubs and things. Um, I've written grants for books so that teachers have physical copies of the books in their classroom with very diverse titles and characters and themes. Um, you know, keeping everything, um, keeping everybody going at their own level is also super important. So we have books um, for our early readers to our most sophisticated readers. Right, right. Something that you just said kind of made me think about this too, because that's a great point. Not every child or even every person reads at the same speed, the same level. Do you have any specific t tutoring or specific, um, you know, learning one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one sessions that you can have with the student to make sure that they are able to keep up and maybe read at a certain pace? Yeah, absolutely. So we do a lot of partnering with community members. So we have community members that come in and read with our students. We also have mystery readers in the month of March. So we've invited in uh, Ms. Ishiko, who is, the building is named after. She's come and read to classes, oh. Dr. Bazzi, Johanna Marakna from Central Office, Eric Whitney. So we have people come in all the time. Um, again, any way that we can strengthen reading, we can. And yes, for students that do need the extra help, we are very blessed in West Bloomfield to have the most amazing reading consultants that work with small groups and work with students one-on-one. -on -one. Love yes. to hear that. That's what mm -hmm. I, it, that is. That is so important. Let me tell you, because I remember being in the class. Now, I was never like one that struggled as much with reading, but I remember being in a class with other students when we would have to read out loud. And then you would kind of see who couldn't read as well, or who would struggle. And, you know, I kind of understand the intent of the teachers doing that back then, but sure. it kind of pointed certain students out. Definitely. So, you know, uh, you know, to have that specific one-on-one -on -one session with students and then not, you know, not putting them out there to make them read if they don't want to more. more Absolutely. More Definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. We want all students to just real feel very secure in what they know. And we don't ever, we just don't want ever anybody to ever have that feeling like you're describing because we exactly. just want to keep them moving at their own level. And the reading consultants work very closely with the classroom teachers to ensure that that would never happen, or at least to the best of our ability, of course. Right, right. <laughs> Good. To, I'm, I'm so glad to hear stuff like that is changing because I was yes. embarrassed for other students. Like, oh, right. man, why are they I doing that? I remember that, that right. feeling too. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Do you have any um, memories of uh, maybe this month reading month um, or maybe even past March reading months that kind of stood out to you that, you know, made you feel like you were you know, doing the right 
good thing. For my yeah, I mean, I guess that question kind of makes me think about like why I even wanted to be a teacher in the first place. My fourth grade oh, yes. teacher, Miss Davis, she used to read out loud to us, and I mean, like I can remember specific books that she read to us and loving mm. them so much. And that's why I keep writing grants for teachers to have books so that when they do their read alouds for kids, I want them to have, I want the students to have their own copies of books because that love of reading, it comes so much mm -hmm. through the teacher. When the teacher mm -hmm. loves the book so much, um, you know, it's just infectious for the students. So I know I've always loved reading out loud to students and just helping them love it. And the, the books that I love kind of, you know, Brindle and um, because of when Dixie and, you know, sometimes the kids are like, Mrs. McDowell, do you ever read a book and not cry at the end? Well, I mean, I try, but it's very <laughs> emotional. <laughs> so like, I love reading and I just like, I'm so thankful that my teachers impart that on their students too. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, that's good. That shows that you are in tune with what I you're reading. I am into it. Yes. Yourself in that experience and that's good. For the children to see let them know that you can it, it's a whole nother world in a book and not only that because i was the same way like i always mention I, I grew up around books my mom took me to the library i worked at the library at eastern michigan when i was there so mm -hmm. I, I understand the importance but it's also it's also important to know the fact that you know nowadays like we said it's, it's a digital age you know, kids' attention are being drawn in, in a bunch of different ways. So uh, I, I just love that we are highlighting March. March is a different, you know, it's a different type of, you know, special month uh, sure. for a bunch of different things. But I like that we're highlighting reading month. So uh, thank you so much for your time. Any last words, any other activities that the school is doing that you want to kind of let the community know about? Well, um, in addition to all of the amazing events, you know, that's one of the things at Chico that we wanted to really improve this year is to provide more family engagement activities. And mm. we are, you could like live at Chico, there's so much going on here. And we are super excited that we are building a brand new building that will open in August of 2026. And nice. so um, we are just getting ready for that move. We are going to be actually located at the Roosevelt campus, or some people know it as the old Abbott for the next two years. And then in mm. August of 2026, um, right on Walnut Lake Road, you will see the brand new Chico. So we are super excited. Um, and I guess I would just say too, like this is my 27th year in West Bloomfield schools, and I am just a very proud principal and I cannot say enough good things about how just fortunate and blessed I am to be here. Absolutely. I can I can see the excitement, the, the pride in your face. And and another woman, by the way, making history and women's history, history month month. also. Yes, we want to give you. you all that praise and that honor, Principal McDowell from Chico Elementary in the West Bloomfield School District. Thank you again for your time for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it.